Alright, today I'm going to show you how to use dynamic background extraction just real quick. Um, some of the settings you can use and what they do. Alright, so I'm going to use uh, some old data from a DSLR camera that I use. So I'm, I uh, did a lot of imaging from my backyard, which is in uh, Mesa, Arizona, which is a suburb of Phoenix. So there's a lot of light pollution. So I bought this... Uh, light pollution filter and it ended up giving all my pictures this weird gradient, this blue gradient, and then when it stacks uh, sometimes it would come out red. So it's a perfect image to use for this to show you to highlight really what uh, background extraction, dynamic background extraction is uh, capable of. So let's start here. We're going to uh, open up this uh, folder here. Alright, so it's the Dumbbell Nebula. And you can see, here, let's just open up one of these real quick. This is the blue gradient that's cast on here from this light pollution filter, this CLS clip, light clip and light pollution filter, this huge blue gradient. And then the final stacked image, after debayering is done, comes out with this super red image. Uh, and so that's where you would use dynamic background extraction. And what you're going to do, how you're going to use this tool is, here, let's open this up again, is, so you'll click on the image that you're going to do it on. Generally I'll do, for this default sample radius, I'll do 11 or 12, for right now we'll do 11. And then samples per row I usually do about 15. And that'll just be, and this is all for when you do the automatic generate your samples, which I recommend doing because it just gets all the areas. And then you can adjust it how you want. But basically, what you want to do, so you can see here, I, when I did that, it didn't get very many spots out here. And you basically want to cover your whole image because you're trying to get, you're trying to remove the gradient. The gradient's across the whole image, so you want to cover, or you want to get samples in every part of your image so it can best remove that gradient. All right. So, and just a side note, you want to you want to crop your image before you do this. Just as a side note, that way you're not getting artifacts that you're trying to crop out crop out in into the calculations of of what's being subtracted. Okay. So, in order to get more of these sample points laid down, we're just going to change the weight, the sample weight. I usually change it down to 0.15 and you can see what that did there. So it basically filled up our whole area except for this little area down here. And we can adjust that. I believe it's about, so you can just keep going up. Never go past I think 3 or 4 on here. You'll probably never even go past 2. But I think it's about 1.2 for this particular image and then you'll just press generate again. See, and then you'll get all these down here. It looks like we're missing one right down here, so let's do 1.3. Generate. Okay, so we have them all there. And then we're going to do target image correction. We're trying to subtract that background. Alright, and then that should be everything. And then we'll just go ahead and press this green check and let it work its magic. Uh, sometimes, too, when you're putting these sample points around. You can move them around. Here, I'll just show you how you move these around. If you want to keep these away from the nebula, you don't want them on the nebula. Move them away from bigger stars. You know, anything that might throw off their calculation. Uh, and stuff you don't want to be included in things that are getting subtracted. Like, you don't want your nebula being included in what's being subtracted. So that's just good data that, you're, that you'd be subtracting. Alright, so we'll look at the background that was removed. So you can see the gradient here that was removed. Look at all that red. Close this. That was all taken off of this. So now let's close this and see what the subtracted image looks like. So much better. So there's still a lot of work to be done. You can see a lot of this red up here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's really it's thermal noise from my DSLR in, in uh, Arizona. It's really hot. so. I, I think my running temperature at this time was like 
40 degrees Celsius or 45 degrees Celsius, something ridiculous. So I was getting a lot of thermal noise. So this image in general just isn't that great, but yeah, so that's how you use uh, dynamic background extraction. Um, you can use it on just about any image and you can generally make your image better. So I recommend using that. All right.